and morning everyone uh it's a great uh, opportunity and pleasure for me to be joining this podcast this morning talking to a fellow smmes uh the topic we're going to be discussing today is quite very interesting something that i'm very uh, uh passionate about how to use our business data to unlock growth and specifically to drive profitability of which that is what everybody wants to do in their business one of our main objectives. If I may be asked, how many of you believe that your business is fully tapping into the power of your data? Maybe by a show of hands. If you really think that, yeah, I, I'm confident, no, or maybe I know that my business is using data, is, is using data to its full capacity or its full potential to see how much, how much we can do with our data. Okay, I see people are still coming, but it's fine. We can we can go right ahead. Basically, there's so much potential hiding within your numbers. If you're not doing it already, I'm just telling you today that there's so much potential hiding behind your numbers that can help drive your business growth and profitability. And all of these, so what we're going to be talking about this morning, we're going to be discussing about what can be done, what options do we have, what tools are available. Uh, what uh, what what is required? Uh, what is required that can, that could be used, that could be applied in our business environment to try and make sure that we achieve what we're trying to achieve, which is profitability at the end of the day. Okay, this is my introductory slide. Basically, we're talking about uh, the value of data these days. A lot of people are saying data is the new gold these days which is true to some extent, but depending what you do, what do you do with it? It's all good and well to have all this data in front of you, but if you don't know what to do with it, you don't know how to package it properly for you, you don't know how to use it to make decisions, you don't know how to use it to unlock a certain areas of your business. It's like you don't have access to that data. You are, the same, you, are, you are in the same position as someone who's not using data at all, someone who doesn't have access to data, or someone who doesn't have the tools or infrastructure to, to to, go, to collect data and start using it. You're going to be talking about the tools that are available. You're also going to talk about the insights. What do you do with those insights? What, once you've gotten your data, it's cleaned up, it's there, it's ready. What do you do with it? Do you really, do you really uh, use it or do you just put it up there for reporting purposes? whereby on a weekly or monthly or daily basis, just go through the motions, you look at the numbers, and then that's it. So we're going to be talking about all those uh, issues today. Next slide, please. Okay, why data matters for SMEs? Data is a growth driver. Basically, this talks to what are you doing with your data to try and grow your business? Or how are you using your data to grow your business? We all know that in the past, it used to be all about big corporations, big uh, conglomerates who could have access to resources, access to, to the infrastructure, because it was, the costing was very prohibitive. Not everybody had access to data. It was very expensive to get uh, those, uh, those, those uh, 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 um, systems that are assisting as a businesses to gather data and then use that data to try and make informed decisions. These days, there's a lot of those tools. There's quite a lot of them. We're going to go through some of them in the next slides. But as a growth driver, data, it tells you what is happening in your space. It looks at the trends. What is happening if you say you own a coffee shop? Who are your competitors? How much are they charging for coffee? And, uh, and uh, how much full traffic full traffic they have in their store if they are close to, to, where, to where you are based. If you are in the clothing space, where are competitors? How, what is their pricing? It's even easier these days, you can access these things freely on social media. You can see their pricing, can do competitor analysis. All of those things in the past were not freely available. We had to do mystery shopping, go to store by store, check the pricing, compare with yours, and check the quality and all of those things. This day is much easier than that. You are able to sit on your, in front of your, of your laptop or desktop, just 
go on social media or on your device, your mobile device, go on social media, check exactly what is your competitor doing? What are the new trends? What are your customers doing? What can you do to improve? Sometimes you even learn from your competitors. That's how you can grow your business. Where do you get opportunities by using data? Business in the opportunities. You look at your data, you look at which are your best selling products, you try and zoom into those products. Why is this product the best seller? Why is it selling more than the other one? Is it because of the pricing, quality, or is it a particular geography in your market that is attracted to a particular region that is attracted to that particular product? If that's the case, why is that the case? Because then what you then do, once you've gotten this data, once you are able to identify where is your your your, uh, your sales are coming from, you are able to come up with strategy to say, what is working in this particular geography? If, for example, that geography is driving sales for that particular product, what is happening in this geography? Why are people in this area? Is this a different market from the other geographies? Because that can, can, that can also be the case that the it's not the right LSM for a particular product. So it then assists you to make the right decision in your marketing efforts. That don't put marketing efforts in this particular part of the of, of the country or of, of the continent or the whole world, basically, because these days internet is borderless. You can't say your customers are only in South Africa for some businesses, not all businesses. So you might find that if you look at your Google Analytics, your data, you realize that people who Hitting, you are hitting your website, you are visiting your website, are coming from all the from all over the world, Australia, Kenya, Nigeria, Egypt, and so forth. So that kind of data, it allows you to understand that there is a demand for your service. There is a demand for your product all over the world. Then you are able to plan accordingly, strategize accordingly, put in the right systems in place, get the right skills in place so that can allow you, put in the right partnerships in place so it can allow you to access that market. I've already spoken about competitive, competitive advantage that businesses that don't use data or don't leverage data, they'll always be left behind because you're going to be spending time trying to figure out why are things not working or maybe why is the competition ahead of you instead of you just looking at what you already have inside your business. Check, check your sales numbers. Where are your sales coming from? Check your cost structure. Why, who, what, 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 what's driving your cost in? Look at all of those things. By analyzing that data, you are able to come up with the right information, right decisions. But for all of that, you need to start where everything should start. Get the basics right. Get the tools right. The processes right. People, right people in the right positions who are able to mine this data, clean this data for you, so that you, as a business owner, you can make meaningful decisions. Next slide, please. Yeah, uncovering opportunities through data, finding new revenue streams. As I've mentioned before, if you have the right set of data, all the information that you need at your fingertips, you've got your dashboards coming through your devices every morning or every week, that kind of gives you a picture of what is happening on the ground. You won't be caught unaware by the competition overtaking you or maybe by a certain issues happening around your environment, around your industry, you with you being, being unaware. Because you can see in your numbers, if there's something wrong with your supply chain, as an example, you're not getting the right materials for your for your products, for you to, to start with the production. You can see that coming through your, your production numbers. If you are tracking those, those numbers on a daily basis or weekly basis, you can see why are we down in production. Then you can easily see that there's something wrong with the maybe material supply. That mustn't also be a, a way of using that information by chance. There must be indicators in place. We'll talk about KPIs later. Indicators in place that are showing you that uh, there's an issue with this particular material. By looking at this particular numbers, you can see the material is prohibiting your, 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 your production capacity to be at its full potential. So it's very important to analyze the data and look at your product. How are they performing? Is this particular pro product giving you the margin that you're expecting? If not, why is that, that, that not the case? Is your pricing correct? All of those things you are able to see by religiously 
looking at your business data, making sure that it makes sense, having systems that are, are, are giving you this data, having a team that understands what does this data mean. Because if the team doesn't understand your data, then it's pointless, it's a useless exercise. You might as well just stop doing it and continue doing things the old way. But that's not what we want. We've got enough capacity now, got enough infrastructure. And besides even that, the cost structure of, of providing this information or this data to your fingertips has really reduced drastically over the years. So there is no excuse this day to say, oh, I can't afford to have, I can't afford to have that. Because even if you don't have the right skills, you can get someone can come on a, on a frictional basis, just become your data analyst or your, your, or your CIO, or for lack of a better way, you can come and say, I'm just here to help you set up your, your data processes, your systems. I'm going to make sure that you put the right dashboards coming through, and then I'm going to train your team to make sure that they understand what all of this means. Because data can be overwhelming sometimes. If you're not a numbers person, or is not someone who pays attention to detail, you can easily get, uh, I don't want to say irritated, but you can get bored and say, what am I doing with all these numbers? What do they mean? So that's why you need people who are going to take this data, convert it for you, and then translate it for so that you can easily understand it. That's why you have your dashboards. You've got your charts, you've got your, your bar graphs, because those are just showing trends. Where is the business going against what you've already said? Because I assume that most businesses are working on targets or budgets. So data comes very handy in such, in such an environment because you are able to track that if I had said in October, my budget for revenue was to make a 10,000 sales. So if you're not making 10,000, let's just say your business is not that seasonal. It's like a flag business. By the 24th of October, if you're sitting at 6,000, you only have one more week to go. That means there's a problem there. Then we are able to talk to your sales team. Guys, what's happening? Why are we not hitting our numbers? We're sitting at 6,000 with one more week to go. Our target was 10,000. Are we going to make it? Can we come up with a promo that can try and boost our sales? If we do come up with a promo, is that not going to dilute our revenue? Is that going to affect our gross margin? You have data that can help you to make all these decisions. Because these decisions are not easy. But if you've got enough data, enough systems in place that are able to assist you to say, let's just do a quick business case and say, if we were to drop our price by 10%, what will that do to our volumes? Is there going to be any elasticity as a result? You must be able to do it before even making that decision. So that means you've been able to make a quick decisions that's going to enable you to hit your target for the month because you, you already had data available. If you don't have the data, you're going to end up shooting in the dark. You're going to end up even guessing what was the problem. Why are we not hitting our numbers? Even worse, you might only realize on the 1st of November that you didn't make your budget because you were not religiously looking at your numbers or at your reporting or your data on a daily basis. So which is why I say optimizing customer experience as well. Engaging with your customers on social media is very critical these days. No comment can just go unanswered these days, especially if it's a negative comment or feedback, because we are able to engage with a particular customer and, and try and find the why they are great with your business. Try and come up with a solution. Try and come up with a service recovery. Remember, the service recovery needs to be a process already in your business. So this data that you're getting from your client your clients who are commenting on social media on your business must just be feeding into your system. That's where data comes in. You've got enough systems in place to be able to capture all these comments that are, 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 are about your business or about your brand online and then kind of groups them into particular groups with verbatim and then your team can just go through as they are to try and see what are these commonalities, what are these common factors we're picking up in our, in our in our comments, negative comments, that is. Because what that, what this does as well, besides personal experiences, it kind of gives an indication to say, are your customers happy with your brand or not? If they are not, then indicate that people might start churning, might start losing customers. If it's a B2B environment, whereby we deal with other businesses, even better, because whatever comment they make, you are able to see this is a particular client that is commenting like this about that. Let's just go direct and call them or maybe have a meeting with them, have coffee with them, 
try and get more understanding why are they not happy where can we get better how can we make sure that um, we fix whatever issues that they're having which is what's going to how they're going to help you in the long run it's going to increase your customer loyalty you're going to see more and more customers sticking around in your business because they understand that all businesses have issues but it's how you deal with those issues it's how you deal with those uh, complaints when they happen do you just ignore them or to deal with them head on if you deal with them head on and get them resolved those customers will stick around so which is why i'm emphasizing the fact that the optimization of customer experience comes from that angle whereby you're intentional about your your, your feedback you're getting from social media and in other uh, channels efficiency improvements analysis of operational data to reduce cost there's another key one most businesses don't have similar cost structures. You, I can be selling a cappuccino and next door can, might be selling another cup of cappuccino, same size, everything. But I can tell you right now, you might find that our cost of producing that one cup of cappuccino is not the same. Could be different reasons. Could be that where I'm sourcing my cups and where there's the cups is different. The quality of those cups are different. The coffee beans are not the same quality. So all of those things. But for a customer who is not really loyal out there, they'll just walk and buy whatever they think is cheap. But maybe if they are really a coffee lover, coffee person like me, they will know where to go. They will know that, okay, I'm going there because I know coffee, coffee shop A has got the right coffee bean. So I'll go there. So you're going to attract your customers before because you've got this differentiator of, of getting quality coffee beans. But you don't know what your, 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 your competitor is doing besides the, uh, the coffee beans. What else is, are they doing on their, in their pricing? Do they offer maybe if you get one coffee, you will get a muffin for free after your 10th uh, cup purchase? Or there is a customer loyalty program that is in place whereby Every time you buy a cup of coffee, then maybe you get a point. Once you get two, maybe 100 points, you get maybe two cups of cups extra. Nobody knows all of this up until you go there and do mystery shopping and pick them up. But you don't understand what is costing them behind the scenes. You don't understand how much they are paying in rent. Did they maybe strike a deal with the landlord to try and give them a kind of a rebate that you're not aware of? Something that you will never know all those things. So that's why I'm saying that the data that you have is going to help you understand your own world, your own structure. That you, if you were to try and compete head on with whoever you want to compete with, you know where to, to play around with the numbers. You know where to go and say, okay, because I know this was this is how much it if it costs you, for example, 10 rents to produce one cappuccino and you are selling to 30 rents, you know I still have a margin of 20 to play around with. But you might find the competitors costing them what? Six rents or eight rents. They are selling it for 25 or it's costing them 15 rent they're selling it for 35. you don't know all those behind the scenes costing that drives pricing some even their pricing is not based on their um, inputs it's based on what the competitor is charging which is where most of the decisions go wrong your data can always keep you sober in whatever decision you want to try and make you go to your data it will tell you exactly how to deal with the, any issues that you have to, you have to deal with as far as your costing is concerned and how to manage your stock and how to streamline your supply chain. Because if you find out that, okay, for some reason you've done your, your mystery shopping or you've done your, you've gotten some intel that um, uh, your competitor is getting same quality uh, coffee beans as you, but at 20% uh, uh, less from what you're getting, you need to go and find exactly where are they getting it from. Or you need to try and find, go and test these coffee beans to, to see are they really at the same quality as your own coffee beans. So I'm just making an example about a coffee shop. I know there's a variety of businesses out there. I just thought that coffee, coffee beans was like a simple business to, to try and understand. Next slide, please. Okay, moving to analysis now. What kind of data can you use? I'm going to just skip customer, I'll start with sales data for now, I'll come back, I'll go, I'll come back to customer data later. Sales data, I think all of us here, we can agree, everybody has access to their sales data. Everybody has a, an idea or a view of how much are they making on a monthly basis and uh, which products are selling. At that, at that level, don't even go deeper to try and find out who was buying, which region, 
and which store if you've got a whole lot of stores but you just know that at the end of the month i know that i made so much money and i sold so many products like in volumes so this way i think you should start look at that data look at your revenue trends look at your product performance your sales channels meaning if you've got a different sales channel that are helping to sell your products check who is your best selling channel by product because by looking at your sales channel, that's, that's just the start. You need to see also if channel A is, is kind of generating, maybe you're, you're giving them a target of selling maybe 100,000 a month. If channel A is always hitting above 100,000, always without fail, then in channel B, they've got also the similar target of 100,000, but they're always missing their target. Maybe hitting like your 80 or 90, or just make it like at 100 or 101,000. You need to sit down and check why is that the case? What you do, you go one step below. Let's look at the volume, let's get the product mix. What are they selling? What is channel A selling that is giving them a higher revenue than channel B? But don't just end there. Next step, look at your costing. How much does it cost you? Because the costing for the product is the same for everyone, but the costing for each channel might not be the same. How much does it cost you as a business to deal with channel A versus to deal with channel B? You might find that channel A, yes, is hitting the revenue, 120,000 plus, 110 a month and all of that. And channel B is not hitting it. But if you look at the margin now, after removing all the cost of doing business with those particular things like your commissions or any support that you give to them, you might find that channel B is the most profitable channel when you compare to channel A. But if you're not using your data, you don't have this uh, uh, channel profitability report, product performance and product profitability report, you won't be able to pick these things up. You will just see your sales going up, but your the momentum of your course is also at the same level as sales, which is not what business people want. As business people we want to make sure that if our revenue is growing at a particular rate, momentum, our course must be kind of or some, something manageable. It mustn't be growing at the very same momentum because that means you're not winning. I Meaning as sales are going, are, are, you shoot, you shoot, you're shoot, shooting the lights out on sales, your costs are also doing the same thing. So for you to be able to manage your costs properly, you need to have this view of how a channel is performing in products at a profitability level, not just at the sales volume level or revenue level. That can be a good start but you need to go deeper so that you can be able to make the right decisions at the right time. Going back to customer data, customer data, that's where we look at behavior now. How, are, how is our base behaving, our customer base behavior? When do they come and buy to, uh, from, 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 from our shop or our business? And how often do they buy and how much do they buy for? Do we need to have a view of all, of all of this? I know it might not be easy to have all of this information, but we can always start. Something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet can just be good enough at the beginning. Just try and capture the, obviously get the customer consent to capture their information. Sometimes you might not even have to capture everything. Just capture their either email address or contact number, whatever that you use to communicate with them, capture that. And then you can maybe create your own kind of customer IDs internally. You can link to that email address or link to that cell number. That would be able to identify who is this customer. You identify them by their cell number, you create your own internal IDs, and then you check how are they behaving. Every time when they come to buy something, always ask for their, for their cell number or email address. I see a lot of retailers these days, they do that a lot. They have this same um, loyalty problem that has been built into their system, so by every time when you buy, they ask you for your cell number. They don't just ask for that number from you because they just want to have your number. They use that number to identify who, who you are and also to, under, to understand what is it that works for you. If they have a sale or a promo on a particular product, is this something to be appealing to you? They can always look at your history, look at your buying behavior and say, okay, we know customer A likes this particular product. We've got a 30% or 50% off sale. Let's just drop them an SMS. Who knows? Out of the 100 SMS that they send, maybe 40 of those customers would show up and come and buy. If we didn't have that intentional process of data management or customer base management, 
you were not going to send out those SMSs, meaning you might have, you could have easily missed out on the 40% of your sales because customers are not aware. Because you don't also want to be sending to everyone, even someone who's never bought that particular product, you just intentionally bombarding them with SMSs. But if it's someone who's shown in the past that they, are, they, they buy this particular product regularly, then there's your first person to start with, your first people to start with. Send them those communication, make sure that um, they are aware that there's a promo so that they can come through and then uh, in, in, in increase your sales. And also, uh, they will also fulfill that they are buying a particular product that they normally buy, but at 70% of the price. Moving to operational data. Operational data covers things like your stock, inventory, your supply chain metrics, human capital and process efficiency. I'm going to start with human capital in this case. Most business, especially us as small and medium-sized businesses, we don't really spend too much time analyzing our people, our staff. Analyzing staff doesn't mean that you're checking that they, they're coming today or they didn't or they're sick or whatever. It's not just that. It's not just that. You go beyond that. You go beyond, you check their level of education. Are they are they interest? Do, do they have any interest in trying to improve their level of education? Do we have in-house courses that can help them to improve? Do we have regular uh, uh, visitors coming through to come and talk to your staff? Not just to motivate them for your own benefit as a business owner, but to motivate as human beings to say, guys, this is doable. Because once you have happy staff, happy human capital, I'm telling you the results will follow. You can have the best business model ever best the product, best whatever. But if your staff is not happy or if your staff, staff is not well-trained, not well-looked after, that's going to show in everything that they do. To our customer service, customers are going to be complaining. Nobody's going to care to deal with those complain customer complaints. So meaning every effort you've put in your investment into your business is under risk because you've got people now who are not looking after your investment because you're not looking after them. So try and understand Try and come up with KPIs, metrics, sit down with your HR consultant or HR manager. Try and understand what exactly is going on, what makes people tick. And the nice thing these days, a lot of AI tools, even AI tools that are there, that can easily help you to try and get that kind of information. Even looking at their productivity without them knowing that you are tracking their productivity, you can easily see, you can pick up these trends. And then once you picked up these trends, then you are able to come back and address those issues and say, for example, I'm going to go back to the example of a coffee shop. Why is a staff member A uh, doing so many cups in an hour compared to staff member B? And you can see the shop is full. You can't say because uh, the shop is not that full. The shop is full, it's quite busy, but there is one uh, a, a, a staff member who's really, uh, of one barista that is really, pushing sales. The other one is not doing much. Maybe there's about 20, 30% gap. You need to understand why is that the case? Is this a, a skills issue? Is it the other parties are more experienced? Or is it is maybe the other parties are more friendly to customers that they prefer that particular barista to make coffee for them? So you need to understand that. It mustn't just be the fact that I'm going to just deal with this one because it's not, it's not being productive. Understand first why they're not being productive and then take action because you'll be coming from an informed angle, you know exactly what you're talking about, then maybe that other staff member was not even aware that they were not um, performing at the required level. So you need to meet them halfway. What can, what can be done to try and improve their productivity? Because you improve your productivity, it's uh, more sales for you and more profit for your, for your business. And you'll be able to give those uh, staff members bonuses. So it's a win-win for everyone. So you can't have a situation where you've got people who are not being productive in your business because of issues that are within your control. I know sometimes there'll be issues that you can't really control outside of your control. That is nothing you can do about that. But if it's still within the business environment, there can still be interventions. Go for it, analyze that data. Well, a lot of people mainly focus on stock. I just want to get stock. Stock availability. I know it's important because what customers want from the business, they want to want, want to buy a product. But that product, there must be someone servicing those clients. If there's not there's someone who's not happy who's servicing them, they'll see that. And to them, it comes out as a poor customer care. 
or poor customer service, then they'll drop you and go to your competition. Market data. Market data here, we're talking about industry trends, uh, competitor analysis, we've touched on this already, economic indicator. Most businesses or some businesses are under sensitive to market movements. If maybe you are in the import export space, your economic indicator is very key for you. How much is the rent? The 1770 to the dollar or 1790 or 1820, it matters to you. So you need to be intentional about it. Have someone who's tracking these things for you because these can influence the decision making. If the rent is getting weaker and weaker, what does it mean for you if you're someone who's importing products from somewhere and selling them here? That means your cost structure is going to change altogether. How do we prepare for that? What can you do? What intervention? You need a finance specialist to come here and assist you with forward curve and all those kind of things. If that's the case, do that. Get the person to come and work it out for you. Help you because you can never know everything. As an entrepreneur, you might find that You've got a background in marketing or in engineering or in maths or whatever, but your skill or maybe your focus is on the domain of your business. You can't know everything. You cannot know how to deal with foreign exchange, how to deal with this and that, how to deal with sales trends, how to deal with customer care on your own. You cannot. You need to have the right team in place. If you can't afford a team, have the right uh, consultants to come and help you. We're going to come and guide you exactly how to deal with certain issues. So market data, have a process in place, have this uh, either as a monthly or quarterly reports that are kind of indicating to you that this is where the market is going. These are the new products coming in. These are the threats that you must, it's like your, your sword, basically. You look, you look at your sword analysis on a monthly basis. You review them on a monthly basis. Do you have any new threats that we didn't have last month? Do you have a new opportunity that we didn't have last month? So in that way, you are being intentional. You're not just um, doing this because uh, it's a nice support, nice dashboard, nice presentation, nice PowerPoint presentation, whatever. It's making you look good as if you know your stuff. It's about you using this information to make decisions. You're using this information to structure and design your business. How your business must look, how your business must function, how your business must operate. How are you going to get to your goals of, of, of becoming profitable if you're not profitable? If you are profitable, how are you going to grow? Make even more revenue than you're currently making. Financial data, that's another key one. Most people, uh, they always shy away from finance. Say, oh, my accountant will deal with this. Because some people have got a wrong understanding of financial data. To them, it's all about financial statements. That's where it ends. And it's just for... Uh, compliance, so I can comply with SARS I'm done, that's it. Whereas there's your life and health of your business. That balance sheet, that income statement, that cash flow statement that you don't have time for, you only just say, look at it when your accountant is around. That's where your business is sitting. If you don't understand what is happening in those three statements, you need to think about that. Even if you have a, one of the best accountants ever, Try and make sure your accountant by and teaches you and kind of coaches you how to understand this information so that you can easily spot if there's something wrong before the accountant comes and say, no, no, these numbers don't look right. It doesn't make sense that you can have this number like this, this other one like that. For a type of business that we're in, you shouldn't be having a data as an example. So if you see a, a, a balance sheet with data, you know very well it's a cash business. Where are these data coming from? because you are selling everything on cash. So if, if you don't even understand those types of basic, you're gonna miss out on a lot. You're gonna delay your decision-making, which is gonna cost you a lot of money and can even cost your business if you're not intentional about tracking your data. Look at your costing. Where, what are the cost drivers of your business? Not just the products. Sometimes you need to look at your overheads, your OPEX, operating expenditure. Check your rent that you're paying. Is it justifiable to pay that much of a rent in this day and age? Do you really need to have a, an office space or you can work from home? Do you really need to be paying for this particular subscription that you're not even using? Do those analysis on a monthly basis. If not yourself, because of time, of time pressures, get someone in your team to look into that so that you, you, you are fully aware of what's happening in your business. Investment returns, that's another big one. 
this talk to business cases. Most business, I know most SMMEs don't have much time to deal with the business cases. If, for example, they want to buy a machine, that's going to increase their capacity. So, okay, I know this machine, if I get it, my capacity is going to grow, but it's going to grow. They don't even know by, by how much it's going to grow. They just go in and buy that machine, they start operating. There was never a process that says, okay, we want to buy this machine, how much is it going to cost us? 20,000, okay. How much production, our experience output is going to come on this machinery? So much. And then how long are we going to be able to, have to pay for this machine? Are you going to depreciate this, depreciate this machine? That means there is, a, there is a benefit in tax because it's going to, depreciation is tax deductible. So do all of those things before you even make a decision to say, I'm buying this machine or not. So that once you've bought it, you are able to go back and say, okay, let's check. Before we bought the machine, we said it was going to cost us 20,000. Did it really cost us 20,000? Basically now what you are doing, we are actualizing your business case. It's what they call post implementation or post investment review, because you are able to see that, okay, whatever that I've assumed is happening or not. If it's not happening, what are the lessons learned? So in future, when I decide to go buy another machine or invest in any other equipment or invest in a marketing campaign, what do I need to put in place before deciding to press the start button? Okay, how can SMEs start using data? Number one, you set your clear goals, meaning look at your current burning problem, your current burning issue. What is your problem in your business? Is your business struggling retaining customers? Are you, are you losing clients? If that's the case, write it down, customer retention. Then you start from then on and say, okay, what do I need to know about customer retention? What do I need to do to make sure maybe I, I've got this view or I've got this um, expectation of customers who want to answer or to change? Meaning you need to go back to what you talk, spoke about earlier pick up the sentiment through the social media comments. If it's a P2P business, you have those your, you have those engagements. You have those engagements whereby you are able to talk to customers face to face. Collect the right data, use your existing systems. You've got your POS, CRM tools. Those are what the meaningful data can use to find all of the data sets that we've spoken about. Then you start analyzing that data. Use your typical tools of your Excel, Google Analytics to try and make sure that data makes sense. Next slide, please. Okay, that, this is the last slide before we get into questions. How can SMEs use data to unlock profits? I'm just going to do because of time pressures, I'm just going to highlight all of this. We've already spoken about identifying and collect relevant data. Make sure that data is clean accurate you get someone to analyze it for you there are tools that are doing that got your power bi your google analytics your Zoho analytics a lot of these tools i don't want to mention all of them then from there you are able to generate these actionable insights that are going to tell you that okay this and this is happening then these are the options we have from then we are able to take those data-driven strategies data-driven decision making you make the right decisions on pricing right decision or decision on which products to put into your shelves, right decision on uh, which products to cancel and so forth. Next slide. Okay, what are your next steps? Basically your way forward. As I've mentioned earlier, invest in your data tools. Get the right person who can assist you to which data tools are going to work for you. Train your staff. That's a very key point. Make sure your staff is data literate. They understand what the data means. Because if they don't understand what the data means, it's going to be a very, very long journey for you to see the benefits of that investment in data tools. Start with small. Uh, start small with the data experiment. Start with your sales data. Just analyze the sales data only and see how that goes. Is it helping you? Is that is is what you really wanted to know or not? And then we can move to the other data sets. Establish KPIs. KPIs are very key, key performance, key performance indicators. These tell you about the life and health of your business. You know if this particular KPI is on a red, you know your business is in trouble. If this one is on a green, you know your business is doing well. So understand your business, if possible, partner with someone external who can come with 
come and sit down with you and kind of help you to understand or to identify which are your key performance areas of, of your business. And then from there, you are able to identify key performance indicators. Leverage your external expertise, I've talked, spoken about that. And then you start making those data-driven decisions. Because once you've done all of this, then you're going to start getting the return of whatever that you've invested in these tools. Because you must be intentional about that. That the, once you spend money and, and, and invest it in a tool that must try and improve something in your business, you have to have that post-implementation review. Say, am I getting a, a return for my investment or not? If not, let's go back to the drawing board and check why are we not getting the returns? Yeah. I hope this was uh, useful to you. So I 